Welcome to the Real Estate Investor Podcast. I'm your host, Gary Lipsky of Break of Day Capital. I talk to leading experts to discuss a wide range of subjects to educate investors on best-in-class practices to build legacy wealth and positively impact communities. Let's jump in. Today on the podcast, we have Dr. Howard Polanski. Dr. Polanski started his career as a dentist for the United States Navy. After serving his country, he began a dental practice in 2009 in Austin, Texas. After nine years, Howard's older son developed an acute medical condition, landing his son in the ICU for 19 days at the local children's hospital. After his son made a complete recovery, Dr. Polanski sold his practice in September 2018, yet colleagues were asking how he was able to walk away. His answer was, I learned how to make money flow. With intrigue from others, he explained the concept of what is now cash flow coaching, saving years from paying off debt, saving thousands of dollars in interest, and having more cash flow immediately. Financial freedom faster. Choosing the right insurance coverage for multifamily properties isn't that complicated, if you know who to talk to. At the Garzella Group, we're uniquely qualified to help you navigate the range of policy choices you have, and we're committed to saving you 30% in the process. We do intensive market research and have nationwide relationships, so we can find coverage other insurance brokers simply can't. We should talk. Go to quotenow.biz, and we'll start the conversation. Hi, Howard. Welcome to the show. Joseph, thank you for inviting me. Could you start by telling our audience a little bit more about yourself and what you do? Yeah, so... I started Cashflow Coach USA uh, just because I didn't know exactly what to call it. Now I tell people that I'm a CFO, I'm a cash flow optimizer. I look at your expenses, whether it's as a family or if you own a business or both, and say, is there a way for us to rearrange your expenses so that you live the same lifestyle? It just costs you less. Now, Howard, um, when we uh, met briefly a few weeks ago, you had told me a very touching story um, involving your son. Um, I would just love for you to share that with our audience. Yeah. I, and I know that you touched on it briefly, but I'll give a little bit more color to it. So I did start as a dentist. I still joke that I'm a recovering dentist now, um, but I practiced for 16 years. Uh, the Navy first, private practice second. Late 2016, I was just starting to get burned out. I didn't know where to go, how to pivot. Sometimes life leaves you little clues, and other times life hits you with a two by four. My two by four moment was in May of 2018. My older son, he came home with a stomach ache. And three days later, we were in the ICU at the children's hospital having emergency surgery. <laughs> it was appendicitis that turned septic, 29 days in the hospital, 19 of them being in the ICU. Eight straight days of sedation because he went to the operating room five times. And after they take the tube out of his throat and after they bring him down from the drugs he was on, the very first question he would only ask me, am I dying? After telling him, no, you're not dying. You've had prayers from thousands of people all around the world and you're going to be just fine. He looked at me. He knew I was telling him the truth. He closed his eyes to get more rest. I walked outside the room and then I broke. And it all just flooded together in terms of if life is this fragile and I'm unhappy with the path that I'm on, burn the ships, it's over. And that's what I did. I sold my practice September of 2018, just walked away from the dental chair. It is not the wisest decision to literally go from having an income to not. So I, that is one piece of advice I would give your listeners is like, please don't go cold turkey like I did. It is rather scary when you do that. But I just needed to. I, there was there was just no way that I could stay in what I was doing. Yeah, that, that's certainly really scary. I'm, 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 I'm glad that things turned out for the better and, um, you know, and, and let this be an, an inspiration and a motivation for all of us, you know, to make ourselves more resilient and, and more robust, robust, because we never know what life's going to come, you know, what, what obstacles we're going to have to face and what challenges that we're going to have to deal with. Um, well, this is a good transition to um, 
how did you um how did you get invested or how did you start investing in real estate and and syndications? Yeah, I've I heard of syndications for a long time. I was always just a big fan of the stock market until the COVID crash. Um, it was. I think probably like a lot of your investors, you just felt like it was a casino. You had no idea if you were going to win or lose. And and at some point you just feel like, oh my God, I, I can't keep going on this roller coaster. And no one ever said you have to lose a bunch of money every time that the market goes down. And the one thing that completely shifted my mind was, are you familiar with the Federal Reserve and frank, fractional banking, Joseph? Oh, absolutely. It's a passionate project of mine. Okay. So you're probably pretty familiar that for every dollar of assets that a bank has, they can loan out 10, literally just make money out of thin air. There was one sentence that was buried in in March of 2020, right before everything got shut down. The reserves for every bank in the United States could go to zero. So literally, they could have $1 of assets and make as many loans as they want as possible. Here's the scarier part. That rule has not changed. So it's not a 10 to 1 fractional reserve banking. It's literally infinite. And it was at that point that I said, I have to start doing something else. And so I have invested in a few syndications. Some have worked great. Others have not. Um, others literally are in the middle of court cases right now, being a Ponzi scheme. So not everything has been real estate related. And, you know, it's a school of hard knocks, just like I tried to learn the stock market and investing there. You got to, you're going to, not everything works out when you invest privately as well. Yeah, I think I think that's an important reminder to investors that as a vet sponsors and looking at different operators, you know, to really do their due diligence because we're not everyone's good at what they do. And so, you know, just, just like in any profession, so that I, I'm, I'm glad you um willing to share them, that it's not always rainbows and unicorns. Now, having said that, um, what, um, could you kind of maybe describe um what, what an ideal sponsor operator might look like to you and, and and or if uh, conversely, if you want to m- maybe just give the audience maybe a, just a few tips on on red flags that you're that you might be looking for. I think longevity is probably the biggest factor that someone should be looking at. Um, whether they were doing it personally, and I'm thinking of one that's a really niche real estate component that I've invested in, but they've taken a spin on it where it's the the primary revenue driver is weddings and they, in their past before they became a syndicator they had a history of converting these properties to destination wedding spots and using the weddings as the primary revenue source and everything else above that was gravy so that one they didn't have a long track record as their own syndicator but they had the track record of doing this under other um other under GPs and other under managers. When it comes to, let's talk the more generic multifamily, uh, self-storage, mobile home parks, the longer the track record, the better. If you can find someone that was before 2008, that you know that they got their butt handed to them and they're still around, that's a big, big check mark. So Above anything else, that would probably be the biggest thing. The second factor would be in terms of things that went full cycle. They bought it, they fixed it up, they sold it. Not everything's going to be a home run, but were was it at least positive a positive return more often than negative? If it's been negative too many times, they're not going to be around then either. So that's probably probably the two biggest factors I look for these days. Yeah, that, that's a great tip, and it's certainly that I resonate strongly with. I mean, there is no replacement for track record. I mean, you know, new, newbie syndicators. You know, I, I I I always tell people this: like you, you're gonna have to earn your stripes. You know, it's just like when you're, like, you know, when you when you need a procedure done, you're not gonna go with somebody that just finished their residency, right? You want somebody who's done that procedure over and over again 
with very little complications, right? Yep. So what um Howard, what what is your um what is your outlook for the economy and or the investment landscape over the next couple of years and where where would you be investing um today with with that outlook? Oof, that one's uh that one's definitely hard because my my crystal ball is just very, very fuzzy right now. Um let's start with in regards to interest rates, if we're gonna take a stab at that. Do I see that continuing to go up as dramatically as it did in 2022? The answer is no, for the simple reason that the United States government is the sole, cost, the sole customer of the Federal Reserve. At some point, if you raise the interest rates too much, every single dollar of tax revenue is going to pay just the interest. You just you can't do that. Um, considering the underfunded nature of Social Security, Medicare, the defense budget, the pensions, it, there's no wiggle room left to keep on doing that. So from that standpoint, I don't see maybe there's another 50 basis points going up, and that's about all I can justifiably see. Hearing other people like from you guys and other podcasts that I listen to, I think there's going to be a world of hurt for a lot of these more new syndicators like you were mentioning that just thought, hey, we can get away with a variable interest rate and they're going to get their butts handed to them. If you're going to try and say what's going to be the safer, I don't think anything is 100% guaranteed safe. You know, with the, in regards to inflation, mobile home parks, I don't see them going anywhere. Self storage, I don't see going anywhere. Um, you know, and then pick and choose your spots when it comes to multifamily syndications. That's probably the best thing that I could think. But even more important than that, right now, the biggest investment is I'm making in myself and my own business because That's I realize, awesome. yeah, because I realize like that is the greatest bang for my buck that I can do right now is that if I can double my own business, I'm not going to be able to get a return like that anywhere else. Yeah. It's uh, never a bad thing to invest in yourself. Um, the more, the, the, the more that we make ourselves smarter and stronger and smarter, you know, uh, the more that we can help people. Um, yeah. So Howard, with that, um, can you tell us more about the uh, Cashflow Coach USA? Um, what are you doing there? Yeah. So I'm guessing this is a more sophisticated audience, so I'm not going to beat around the bush. I help people utilize lines of credit effectively, whether that if they have a business utilizing business lines of credit, if they own a home or homes, home equity lines of credit, if they have overfunded uh, permanent life insurance, utilizing how to cash value lines of credit. I don't care where the lines of credit are coming from. It's But it is a weapon that people don't understand how to utilize efficiently and effectively. And the first client that I did this with, which happened to be a dentist when I was transitioning out, he bought a condo instead of taking 30 years to pay it off he paid it off in eight, he paid off the condo in 8 months and i was like he's like what do i do now i said i don't know <laughs> but it's a problem to have <laughs> yeah yeah i mean it's a, you know to not have that fixed payment for the next 29 plus years it's a pretty nice feeling um he definitely has understood the process at that point but he told his business partner and I told a friend of mine what happened and they become they became clients two and three and so then I realized like wait a second there is a there is a business in a way to teach this system to other people um and so that's what I do is just like how do we go from these fixed payments which you're trying to navigate around every, every month essentially and get them out of the way sooner, quicker, but more importantly, still have flexibility in your funds so that when break of day capital comes up with another investment, another opportunity, you say, oh, I have the funds here. Let me strike. And then know I can pay myself back with 
not only my current income, but then the additional distributions that I'm going to get from break of day and reload myself to then be ready for the next opportunity. So I kind of jumped to stage two or phase two, but that's the whole idea. No, that's awesome. I mean, it's like, that should be like a required course, you know, in, in high school or, or college, but we don't, we don't get that education, you know? And so I'm, um, we're, I'm, I'm very happy that you provide this service for people. Um, Hey, uh, we're getting closer to the uh, end of our uh, uh, podcast today. Um, before we um, get there, um, I, I'd love to ask you just a, a few more but personal questions. Would, would that be okay, Howard? Yep, go for it. All right. Um, could you recommend a favorite podcast, a book, a movie, or a documentary, or all of the above? Uh, <laughs> okay, favorite movie. One of my favorite movies is Office Space. It's just timeless in terms of the corporate world. Um, favorite book, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Ecker, which has nothing to do with in terms of financing. It's everything about mindset. Uh, favorite podcast. Unfortunately, I have too many that are on my list. I don't want to just slice out one. So, um, but here, here, I'll go with a favorite quote or favorite question I've I've picked up recently by James Clear from the author of Atomic Habits. And this is when you are in your due diligence of anything in life. Do I need to spend more time gathering better information or do I need to spend more time acting on the information I already have? Oh, that's powerful. I like that. So I was going to ask you, um, what advice would you give to your younger self? Would, would that be it? Or, or do you have something else? So I mentioned, um, you know, my older son, uh, I've got two boys. Thankfully, my older son, everything worked out okay. I look at them and say, what is it that I wish I knew back then and try and instill that so that they can be successful in whatever way that as they move forward? And that is understand real estate, invest in real estate sooner. I never did. I And it's just one of those that I just have a fear of doing it actively. I guess I've heard enough horror stories and I just, I want them to get over the fear because what is it? Perfect inaction is better than taking no action at all. I'd rather them learn the mistakes when they're young, when they still don't have a gigantic net worth and see the power of real estate and the tax benefits in multiple directions so much sooner in life and the understanding of cash flow so much sooner in life when their expenses are still so low. That's That of anything is what I would recommend to my younger self. Well, that's a lot of wisdom there. I can certainly resonate with a lot of it. Um, what is the one question that I should have asked you but did not? Oh, that's a good one. Man, you stumped me on that. God. <laughs> Usually the question is regarding the whole cash flow optimization. How did you figure this out? And believe it or not, it was just some random YouTube video that came across way too late at night. And even after I go through that, they're like, but you're a dentist. How and why did you understand this? And I said, because if I didn't become a dentist, I was considering becoming an actuary. And then they're like, oh, now this makes all the sense. (laughs) (laughs) That's pretty cool. No, yeah. it's just the, the the universe speaks to us in different ways. You know, just you, you know, this is probably a good tip for um for our audience that you know just be mindful and and keep your eyes open because the universe is always telling us something. So I I love that. Yeah, Joseph, well, let, me, let me before you go on to the next question. I sure. Let Let me uh, go on top of what you just said. Okay. For the first forty something years of my life. It was always leading with head first. It was always logic based. That is why I went into dentistry. I never listened to my heart. 
I didn't. I never listened to my heart. And it wasn't, as I said, it wasn't until I listened to my heart and after helping these first few people that, you know, with the whole cash flow thing where I was like, this is the way you're going to make an impact in this world. It's not dentistry. It's not doing another root canal. It's not doing another crown. It's teaching people the rules of what I call the new finance and the, and more importantly, the system around it so that they can take it and they can get to their freedom sooner. As soon as I finally listened to my heart and said, this is just the direction I have to go. Now, all of a sudden that weight just came off. So if you want the one piece of advice, that is it is like, make sure to go into your heart as woo -woo as that sounds. And it won't lead you astray. I love that. I'm I'm so glad that you got that in there. Um, it's certainly something that I I resonate with very strongly. You know, I I've been a beneficiary of investing in a lot of syndications and and, and being able able to enjoy the pa- the passive cash flow and and kind of living life on our own terms. But you know, it's life is so much better when I can share with what 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 what, what I've learned o- over 30 years of investing and helping as many people as we can whether it's through education or 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 opportunities or 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 helping them with the giving them the tools to figure all this stuff out you know it's it's extremely gratifying so thank you for that howard i i'm so glad we got that in there well howard um thank you for providing your valuable insights and wisdom for our listeners and we appreciate what you do what you're doing with cash flow coach to help investors manage and gain access to more alternative investments. Uh, we support anyone providing the opportunities, tools, and the education to help regular people become savvy investors in the alternative investments world. Lastly, before we let you go, where can listeners find you? Yeah, a um, couple different ways, www.cashflowcoachusa.com. But it's just as easy to call me or text me 512-608-1020 or email is Howard, H-O-W-A-R-D, at cashflowcoachusa.com. Awesome. This is Joe Fang with Break of Day Capital signing off. We will be back next week with another informative episode on the Real Estate Investor Podcast. Bye, guys. To all of our listeners, thanks for joining us. And if you like this episode, please head over to iTunes or Stitcher and like, subscribe, and leave a review as it will help us reach more people. And if you'd like to learn more about what we do at Break of Day Capital, head over to our website at breakofdaycapital.com and sign up for our newsletter and fill out our investor application. We'll talk to you next week.